Hello and welcome to the TTI Distribution Download, the podcast where we talk about all things happening in the world of electronic components with the specialists of TTI. Thanks, Jim. Hey, everybody, and thanks again for plugging in to TTI's Distribution Download. I'm Steve Berhoski, and I'm a Connector Business Development Manager here at TTI. I've been in the electronics industry for 30 years, four of them here at TTI. In this episode, we're welcoming my colleague, Gia Hayes, Vice President, Aerospace and Defense, and Kat Brandis. Kat's a product manager from Amphenol Aerospace. Today's topic will be a discussion around SOSA architecture, and more specifically, Vita connectors developed for this open standard. So before we begin, Gia, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself to the audience, please. Sure. Hello, everyone. I'm Gia Hayes. I've been in the industry for about 25 years. I've been at TTI coming up on five. I have worked with Amphenol for many of those years, so I'm looking forward to talking about SOSA and Vita. How about you, uh, Kat? Would you mind introducing yourself to the audience, please? Absolutely. Hello, everyone. My name is Kat Brandis. I'm a marketing product manager with Amphenol Aerospace. I've uh, been with Amphenol now for 18 years, going on to 19, uh, in various roles throughout my career. But I am the current uh, board-level product manager here, and I support the newer VPX lines that we are promoting uh, into the market. In our industry, we hear about SOSA and Vita fairly often. So, Kat, would you tell us about the history of Vita and Amphenol's role in its connector development? Uh, absolutely. Uh, so, Vita is a standards organization that was uh, really established back in the early 80s. Um, they established a VME bar- parallel bus architecture uh, back then capable of roughly 8, 16, and 32-bit data rates. Um, this architecture eventually evolved into VME 64 architecture in the early 90s and eventually replaced was replaced by serial fabric approach in the early 2000s, uh, which led up to the VPX architecture. As far as Amphenol and the products that we have, Amphenol's aerospace Vita connectors are open standard COTS connectors for military and aerospace applications uh, that really uh, demand the high performance and data transfer speeds uh, in a robust package. So. These connectors are specialized open architecture backbend connectors that adhere to the strict uh, VPX standards put forth by the VITA standards organization. And the standards that really apply to us are like VITA 46 and others to um, deliver unmatched performance and in these military embedded systems. So I think you touched on a little bit, but what exactly does VITA, the acronym, stand for? So VITA stands for VME Bus International Trade Association. And as I said, they've been around for quite some time. Um, it's a standards organization responsible for the development and sustain and sustainment of VPX open standards and VPX architecture that allows this eco uh, system to communicate. Amphenol Aerospace is an active member of the VITA standards group uh, by helping to write a lot of the standards and is actively you know, in the working groups there alongside the primes um, that are working to push requirements for next-gen systems, uh, as well as component and connector manufacturers that are enabled the creation of the new standards. Uh, in addition to our involvement, there are other folks that are participating in those groups, of course. So for our listeners, we've already heard VPX referred to quite a few times. Can you tell us what that means? So VPX is an open architecture specification, um, wide in scope, but generally it refers to the family of computer bus technologies that utilize 3U and 6U um, form factors, the old Eurocard form factors. Uh, these are switch fabric formats, uh, which are among the features. The, the VPX standard is an industry standard architecture for embedded computing system that require uh, especially fast data processing speeds, such as those common in modern uh, military technologies. So when did Amphenol release or get involved with the VPX connectors initially? Well, um, the VPX uh, specification known as Vita 46 really emerged uh, in 2004 or thereabouts and became a standard um, with the American National Standards Institute or ANSI as we like to refer to it back in 2007. Amphenol decided to pursue qualification in uh, 2014, and by 2016, Amphenol had Vita 46 connectors completely tooled and qualified to the Vita 46 spec with uh, independent testing uh, completed uh, at a third-party test house. Um, in addition to qualifying our connectors, Amphenol NTE established license agreement for the mating interface dimensions to ensure that there's never a concern um, in the market of intermating Vita 46 
qualified connectors such as Amphenol and TE together. Uh, Amphenol connectors are drop-in electrically and mechanically uh, with TE's qualified RT2, RT2R, and their RT3 product. Could you give us a few standard VPX technology examples? Um, absolutely. So I, so I mentioned uh, some of the specs, but specifically Vita 46 signal connectors, right? That is a Vita spec that we're qualified to with our RVPX series. So these are signal connectors, high density, high speed, uh, that you can utilize in a 3U or 6U form uh, format for single board computers. Another example would be Vita 46.30 like our RVPX EVO 2 series. So these are similar to the standard Vita 46 connectors. However, they're higher speed uh, capability enabled. So they're utilized on high speed backplanes and module connect connectors rated up to 25 gigabits. Uh, actually, ours are qualified up to 32. Uh, additional st specs include Vita 66.1, 66.4 fiber optic connectors uh, for hybrid backplane utilizing fiber and signal. Um, we also have Vita 67.1, 2, and 3, which are hybrid connectors utilizing high frequency contacts and fiber optic all in one connector package designed to work together uh, on single board computers. So um, a great place to get more info on these technologies is at open.tech.com, which is a uh, website that we just released uh, to help um, users in the industry get more information. Can you give us some examples of where this high-speed product can be used? Absolutely. Um, so Amphenol Vita connectors obviously are essential for applications that involve uh, significant data transfers in harsh environments. Um, so looking at uh, applications, those can include ground combat systems, commercial and military aerospace applications, uh, missile defense uh, applications, space, um, space systems, radar uh, equipment, intelligence surveillance and reconnaissance systems utilize these connectors, sensors, switches, certainly integrated processors that are utilized in military embedded uh, systems and just the general VPX single board computers that are again utilized in these military uh, embedded chassis that are utilized on uh, major platforms. There's some new Vita product that's currently out in the market and it's now in stock at TTI. Could you talk a little bit about that for us? Certainly. Um, so that product is our MIL HD2 uh, next gen uh, connector really. And it's a SOSA uh, aligned connector um, and is qualified to Vita 91 spec. Um, and it was a, developed in alignment with uh, working with SOSA and then working subsequently with the Vita group to write the standards for the MIL-HD2 uh, series. So MIL-HD2 provides uh, developers with really available, robust, open architecture solution um, that is really twice as fast and twice as dense as the current Vita 46 connectors uh, with, uh, you know, capable up to 56 gigabit PAM4 data rates, which are really required for next-gen uh, switch requirements. Cool. Sounds like a really great product. And as Gia mentioned, we're currently stocking it here at TTI. Could you maybe tell us some more about the features and benefits for those interested in this particular Vita product? Absolutely. So as, as already mentioned, twice as dense and twice as fast as the current Vita 46 connector. Um, it supports data rates up to 56 gig PAM4. Uh, ensuring that the connectors can handle the latest high-speed applications. They're also very rugged from that standpoint. They're built to withstand uh, demanding conditions for the military and aerospace environments, including vibration, shock, temperature, um, in addition to passing just standard Vita 46 uh, test level requirements. Um, MIL-HD2 has also been qualified to Vita 72 vibration levels, um, and those for those uh, listeners that don't know what Vita 72, Vita 72 is a higher vibration spec established by a Vita study group for application requirement requiring extreme vibration requirements. Um, it's also obviously just in general, all our connectors are fully aligned with uh, the Vita standards and they are designed to be intermediable uh, and inter uh, mountable uh, depending on the spec. Um, but certainly Vita 46, 46.30, Vita 91 allows for seamless integration uh, with existing and future systems while reducing the need for costly redesigns. There's a lot of technical stuff that we're talking about. You know, intermatability is really important for this vertical. 
How difficult would you say it is to install this connector series? In general, uh, speaking about the Vita 46 connectors, um, even the Vita 91, they are all press fit connectors utilizing compliant contacts. So there is no need to solder these connectors to your board. It's actually a simple flat bar installation process that doesn't not require any special tooling for the Vita 46 series and very minimal tooling for Vita 91. That's good. That's good to know. Thank you. So OpenVPX is the next-gen interoperability standard for system-level aerospace and defense applications. But let's put it in layman's terms. What, what can we use it for? It is ideal for rugged applications that require smaller packages, right? Uh, as well as high uh, I.O. densities and higher speed capability that these connectors allow you to have. OpenVPX leverages the work of the individual Vita standards to reduce customization, testing, cost, and risk. Um, it defines an architecture that manage, manages a constraint module and backplane designs, defines pinouts, and sets interoperability compliance while maintaining full compliance with Vita standards. So I think you mentioned this uh, term before, but can you tell us about open.tech by Amphenol and what that means? Yeah, absolutely. So open.tech is really a, a new uh, page that uh, we've launched here recently, and it provides military and defense manufacturers with a comprehensive marketplace for Amphenol's broad range of open architecture solutions. These include circuit board and I.O. connectors, uh, flex and rigid board solutions, active components, um, CCAs and value add capabilities. Uh, this is one stop shop really for all your Amphenol VPX military embedded interconnect needs, eliminating the need to search uh, for products from multiple divisions or multiple sites. What's the goal of a platform like Open.Tech? Our platform goal is really to simplify the search and procurement process, uh, enabling customers to easily find the optimal mill embedded cost solutions for their assembly needs, facilitating open, modular, and scalable design goals efficiently and cost effectively all in one place. Well, this sounds like a unique tool to Amphenol, but can you give us an example of what an engineer can find if they were to log on to open.tech right now? Absolutely. Our, you know, Comprehensive product range covers all your connect, uh, connectivity needs from digital high-speed connectors, RF connectors, fiber modules, fiber optic uh, transceivers, just to name a few. Um, essentially, you will need, see everything you need for use inside and outside of the chassis or the box. Um, in addition to the connector level, we also offer higher level integrated solutions, including VPX switch modules, fully populated backplane PCBs, uh, including the capability to fully assemble a chassis. Um, it just really depends on the level of service the customer is looking for. Amphenol has the product breadth and expertise to support the entire build. Well, it's really cool uh, connector system. Obviously, this demonstrates Amphenol's leading edge technology and innovative solutions that you bring to market. I, uh, I want to thank both Gia and Kat for joining me today and discussing Vita connectivity with this audience. We look forward to future episodes with Amphenol Aerospace, one of our premier suppliers in this space as they continue to share information on innovative products to support leading edge designs. And I wanna thank the listeners for plugging in with us today and please tune in again for our next distribution download. That's it for this episode of the TTI distribution download. For more information on any of the topics you heard about today, reach out to your nearby TTI branch at 1-800-CALL-TTI or visit us online at tti.com. <laughs>